friends! This is Libby again from Lucky Bean Tours here in New Orleans and behind me is a New Orleans streetcar. It is not the streetcar named Desire, but it's definitely the type of streetcar that Tennessee Williams would have had in mind when he wrote his iconic work about New Orleans. Today, we're going to explore this wonderful city and our focus is going to be on writing and drinking. These are the upper Pontalba buildings. Um, these are a set of beautiful old townhouses that were built in the 1850s that flank Jackson Square. And it is a literary landmark because Sherwood Anderson, the writer, lived here. And he and his wife were the sort of leaders of a little group of writers and creative types that lived in New Orleans in the 1920s and the 1930s. In the shadow of St. Louis Cathedral, in an alley called Pirate's Alley, there's a little apartment where William Faulkner lived when he wrote his first novel. And now it's a bookstore called Faulkner House Books. This is the French Quarter building where Truman Capote lived and wrote when he was a young man. Tennessee Williams was not from New Orleans, but he fell in love with the city as a young man and he lived here off and on his entire life. And then ultimately he bought this townhouse in the French Quarter. This third floor apartment in this building on St. Peter Street in the French Quarter is where Tennessee Williams was living when he wrote his famous play, A Streetcar Named Desire. This beautiful yellow garden district home behind me is where F. Scott Fitzgerald lived in 1920 when he was editing the galleys for his first published book, Tender of the Night. This home behind me on Louisiana Avenue was once home to Kate Chopin, the writer. Her most famous work is The Awakening, but she also wrote several short stories about the mixed race and Creole people of Louisiana in the 19th century. Something about the corner of First and Chestnut seems to inspire the written word because in the houses on all four corners of this intersection, famous writers have lived and written. Most notably, right across the street from me, in this impressive pink mansion, Mark Twain lived there when he was writing Life on the Mississippi. And then, right behind me here, this lovely home, Cokie Roberts and her family rented this house when they were in New Orleans. And of course, she wrote many books. Across the street, Julia Reed lived in this house and she wrote a book about living in this house called The House on First Street. And then catty corner from me, this lovely mansion belonged to Anne Rice, the vampire writer, but Walt Whitman, the great American poet, also lived there. My friend here is Ignatius Riley. He's the protagonist in a book called Confederacy of Dunces, which was written by John Kennedy Toole and won the Pulitzer Prize in 1981. And it's a great book about crazy eccentric New Orleans culture. In the opening scene of the book, the character Ignatius is waiting for his mother under the clock at D.H. Holmes, which was a local department store. This is no longer D.H. Holmes, it's now a Hyatt, but the statue commemorates the book. This is the steamboat City of New Orleans. She's one of about three or four steamers that you can take daily cruises on when you're here in New Orleans. But in Mark Twain's day, they were lined up four deep, waiting to load and unload in this bustling port city. And he wrote a memoir that's half about him learning how to be a riverboat pilot when he was a young man. And half of it is about a trip along Mississippi that he took after he was an established writer. Royal House in the French Quarter is a great restaurant that serves great oysters, but it used to be called Tortoricci's and it was the literary hangout from about the 1920s to the 1970s. This is Antoine's. Antoine's is the oldest restaurant in New Orleans. It's been there since 1840 in the same family the whole time. And it was the setting for Francis Parkinson Kai's book, uh, Dinner at Antoine's. But also Mark Twain uh, entertained people here. He loved it, he thought it was great. Truman Capote said it was a lousy restaurant. I think it's a good restaurant. The Mont Leon Hotel is kind of where we cross over from talking about writers to talking about drinking because it's the bridge. It is a literary landmark because several famous writers have lived here or stayed here. Uh, and Truman Capote claimed that he was born here, although that's not true. But also inside the bar is the Carousel Lounge. 
It is a bar that's been rotating on a two horsepower engine since the 1930s. The Monteleon Hotel has been in the same family since the 1880s, and it's the biggest hotel in the French Quarter. Do you see the seats slowly moving? This is the Roosevelt Hotel in downtown New Orleans. Inside the Roosevelt, there's a bar called the Sazerac Bar. Now the Sazerac cocktail is the official cocktail of New Orleans, voted by the Louisiana legislature in 2008. But that is a cocktail that's been enjoyed in New Orleans since the 19th century. Nice twist for you, so it's Instagram worthy. The blacksmith shop is in an old Creole cottage that was probably built in the early 18th century. And the rumor, the legend, is that it was a blacksmith shop that was actually a money laundering operation for a band of pirates. That's Pat O'Brien's behind me, uh, opens since the 1930s and home of the famous hurricane drink. Thank you for joining me on this literary and cocktail tour of New Orleans. This magnificent live oak tree behind me is called the Tree of Life and it's in Audubon Park. It doesn't necessarily have any literary um, stories associated with it and it's probably had a couple of cocktails consumed under its branches. But when Walt Whitman wrote Leaves of Grass, he included a poem called I Saw in Louisiana a Live Oak Growing. And no doubt it was inspired by his time in this magnificent place.